London, Spring, 1805. A gentleman's study is more than a mere sanctuary for its master. For it to be that true beacon of masculinity, the room must be formidable and austere, a place that conveys all the proper pride, pomp and circumstance that is due to its denizen as he conducts his business and intimidates his underlings. No self-respecting gentleman would accept anything less, and Horatio Granger was no exception. However, young Miss Tabitha had never felt such trepidation in her father's study. From an outsider's perspective, Mr. Granger's room was the epitome of what a study should be, managing its function to perfection. But for Tabby, it was a place filled with fond memories of sitting with her father by the fire as they gorged themselves on books and tea cakes. Though plenty of people found Mr. Granger to be an imposing man, Tabby knew her papa to be more bluster than bile, and visiting him in his study had never caused Tabby an ounce of dread or dismay. Until this moment. Clenching her fists in her skirts, Tabby watched her father's face. It was thin and lined, though that had more to do with the angry pull of his eyebrows than age. She had to make him see. Her happiness depended on it. Leaning on his desk, he watched her as if peering into her soul, and Tabby pushed away her nerves to radiate the confidence she felt in her choice. This was the right one. There was no other. Tabby's heart rested on the edge of a knife, ready to be cleaved in two if things went awry. She knew that if the worst should happen, there would be no piecing it back together. Her heart would be irrevocably ruined, and she would be lost. You wish to marry Joshua Russell? Her papa huffed and shook his head. That jackanapes? He is a gentleman, insisted Tabby. A good man. No man with his reputation can be called either of those things, Tabitha, he said with a scowl. You cannot be serious about marrying him. He should never have been introduced to you in the first place, and he should have had the decency to speak with me before paying his addresses, rather than hiding in the shadows like a sneak. If he had come forward sooner, you would have denied him as you are now. What good father would do anything less? He puffed his cheeks, glaring at his desk. If I'd had any clue that he was sniffing around, I would have packed you off into the country post-haste. Tabby held herself in her chair, though she felt compelled to get on her knees and beg. She'd never had such an urge before, but the thought of losing this battle left her feeling as though a vice were clamped around her heart, squeezing it until it was liable to burst. He has changed, Papa. I am not ignorant of how Mr. Russell has behaved in the past, but he is different now. Her father huffed again and shook his head. Altering oneself to impress a young lady is not a sign of a true change of heart. 